Hey Top Teners, I'm your host Joss and welcome back to Top 10 Beyond the Screen. You can find the BTS team on social media now, all our links are in the description below. And if you're new here, it is tradition that if you stick around until the end of this video, you can join me as I hand select some comments and respond to them. So make sure that you hang out with me until then. As for today's video, this one is for all my Marvel fans out there who are probably still losing their minds over the new Spider-Man movie. We will always give Tom Holland a round of applause for taking on the Spidey role and killing it, but we all know that there's a history of actors with every hero role out there. Over the years, there have been multiple Spider-Man actors, but what about the runner-ups? Let's check out who wasn't good enough for the role. Just kidding, but seriously, let's look at the top 10 actors who were almost Spider-Man. Starting off our list at number 10 is Charlie Sheen. Good God, can you just imagine? The good news is that his dreams of playing Spidey were long before he was bragging about having tiger blood in his veins. A young Charlie Sheen was hoping to have Spider-Man DNA. In 2012, while the actor was on the Jay Moore's podcast, he revealed that in his younger days, he attempted to get a movie adaptation of Spider-Man off the ground with him taking on the leading role. Sheen used to have a office at Orion headquarters, so he took the idea to some producers at the studio and told them that he was perfect for the role of Peter Parker. He said, I had an office at Orion at the time and I brought them Spider-Man. I said, look, in a couple of years, I'll be too old to play Peter Parker. But they told me that cartoons are not the future and comic books are also not the future. Boy, were they wrong, but it is not surprising seeing as Orion declared bankruptcy just a few years later. Jay Moore asked Sheen if he had the rights to Spider-Man at the time of his proposal and he said no, but that, I quote, I had a guy in my my pocket who was going to get them for me. Anyone else glad that none of that worked out? At number nine is Robert Pattinson. Yes, one of the world's most loved vampires was once considered for the role of Spider-Man. When news broke that director Sam Raimi and actor Tobey Maguire were both stepping away from the Spider-Man franchise, the rumors went into overtime. It was said they left the franchise because of disagreements about the Spider-Man 4 script, so people immediately started to guess who would be filling in the new Spidey suit. A number of different websites ran an April Fool story that confirmed Pattinson would be taking over the role, which fans were absolutely thrilled about. Turns out because of the reaction those prank articles got, Sony actually was wanting him for the role because it would secure the teen demographic. A pretty smart business move, we gotta admit. However, when Spider-Man 4 was canned and a reboot was announced, Pattinson could no longer be considered because the new movie was going to feature a high school age Peter Parker, and let's be honest, that just would have been too big of a stretch. So I mean, the number eight spot on our list is James Franco. Believe it or not, even some of Hollywood's most popular actors still get rejected after an audition. Sometimes they fail to get the part that they were really wanting and pushing for. This was the case for Franco when he was reading for the lead role as Spider-Man in Sam Raimi's version, which was ultimately given to Tobey Maguire instead. Not only was he reading for the part, but he admitted he went through quite the extensive audition process for it, which isn't surprising seeing as it is a huge role to fill. During an interview, James confessed that when he got the call from Sam saying he didn't get the part, he was really disappointed, as anyone would be. But the director tried to soften the blow and offered him the part of Peter Parker's best friend, Harry Osborn, who is also the son of the Green Goblin. He ended up taking the offer and it is a good thing he did because it is one of the roles that really put the actor in the public eye. And good news is he can forever say that he was a part of the Spider-Man franchise, which is still something to brag about even when you're not playing the hero himself. In spot number seven is Zac Efron. The former Disney star was once being considered for the Marvel superhero back when the ultimate Spider-Man relaunch was announced. Everyone knows that in the acting industry, connections are key. Sometimes it is all about the people you know. Turns out Zach had collaborated with comic book writer Brian Michael Bendis on the adaptation of the novel Fire. So when Bendis was responsible for the Spider-Man relaunch, Zach already had one foot in the door. Bendis admitted that he had contacted Sony about the direction of the reboot and mentioned that he had Efron in mind for the role. The news got out and Zach was thrilled to even be considered. He had no problem letting everyone know, including Sony, that it would be a dream come true for him. Like many other people, the actor has been a Spider-Man comics fan since the age of six. During an interview with MTV, he was asked if he would like to play the part in the reboot, to which he replied, are you kidding? It would be a dream come true. I think it would be an honor. I would tear up. Unfortunately, the role was never given to him, and there isn't really an explanation 
and why. So we can just assume that he was probably tearing up for other reasons after that. Taking over the number six spot is Jake Gyllenhaal. Sometimes studios are forced to recast one of their leading roles for one reason or another. This is what almost happened to Tobey Maguire in the Spider-Man 2 movie. Turns out Maguire was filming the movie Seabiscuit near the end of 2002, which was shortly before he was set to begin filming for the Spidey sequel. The actor injured his back while on set of Seabiscuit, which forced the studio to start preparing for a recast in case he had to be replaced. That is where Jake Gyllenhaal comes in. The studio decided not to go back to previous actors who had already screen tested for the role, and Sony began negotiations with Gyllenhaal instead. He was selected and confirmed to be the new replacement, but Toby ended up recovering just in time to film his scenes for the hit sequel. Jake literally just missed the opportunity of playing the hero. It was probably one of those situations where like, you hope he's okay, but deep down you also hope that he doesn't actually recover. Halfway through the list at number 5 is Tom Cruise. We are going back to the late 70s and early 80s for this one. Back then there were several failed attempts to negotiate a deal to get Spider-Man swinging on the big screen. Marvel finally signed with a production company called Canon Films. The company is one of the first ones to attempt adapting the character. Originally they hired Toby Hooper to direct the film, but was eventually replaced by Joseph Zito. Zito was interested in a stuntman named Scott Leva to play the role of Spider-Man, but the studio wanted Tom Cruise, who was an up and coming actor at the time. Cruise was in his mid 20s during production, which would make him a prime candidate for Peter Parker. Plus, he was just coming off of the success of his movie Top Gun. The movie seemed to be coming together, but Cannon ended up lowering the budget for the movie, which caused a chain reaction of people just walking away from the film, Cruise being one of them. He ended up turning down the offer, and the movie was just ultimately put to rest. Here we are at number 4 with Daniel Radcliffe. The former Harry Potter star was actually being considered before Tom Holland took on the role in the current MCU. Not only were they interested in him, but Radcliffe was interested himself in playing the iconic hero role. But when the part was given to Holland, he had no bad blood towards him. In fact, he has only positive things to say about our current Spidey, calling him a fantastic actor. During an interview with Metro Co UK, he said, I would have been a good Spider-Man, but the boat has sailed on that, and I'm very happy to watch Tom Holland do it. He's fantastic. He also admitted that he didn't really want another multi-year contract like he had with the Harry Potter franchise. It's just a big load of commitment. He said, I'm not sure if I'd sign up for something that was another 7 or 8 films or 10 years, but a shorter franchise, yeah. So I guess that it all worked out for everyone then, although I personally think he would have made an awesome Spider-Man. Alright guys, at number 3 is Leonardo DiCaprio. Director James Cameron was considering Leo for the role of Peter Parker in his version of Spider-Man, but the actor is the one who ultimately turned down the role. Rumors were flying around for a long time that he was going to play Spider-Man, but it wasn't until years later that he admitted he met with Cameron for the movie, but ended up passing on it. He admits that he read the screenplay, but felt that he wasn't ready for a big role like that. When talking about it, he keeps it simple and says that where he was at in his career at the time, he didn't feel like he was ready for a huge franchise role like that. It didn't hurt his relationship with Cameron though, who ended up making Titanic and took Leo along with him, which obviously worked out nicely for both of them. At number 2 is Heath Ledger, an honorable mention to the incredible actor who took on the role of the Joker in The Dark Knight before passing away. He will forever be remembered for his performance, but turns out he could have ended up on the other side of the superhero divide if it was up to Sony. When Sam Raimi was casting for Spider-Man, Heath was the actor at the top of his list. Ledger's former agent Steve Alexander revealed that Heath was their number one choice during an interview in 2009 with Entertainment Weekly. He said, Sony asked me to come over and read the script for Spider-Man. It was going to be a really cool tentpole movie, but as soon as I said Spider-Man, Heath said, it's not for me, I would be taking someone else's dream away. Heath apparently admitted that he wasn't a big Spider-Man fan like other people were and that he doesn't appreciate its history the way someone else would. I mean, just when you thought we couldn't love Heath Ledger any more than we already do, what a guy. Taking our number one spot is one that will probably surprise you, Michael Jackson. Another honorable mention that is definitely worth mentioning. It was a surprise for comic book readers when Disney out of all companies took over Marvel Comics back in 2009. Turns out it wasn't the first time the company mentioned the idea of selling though. In the mid 90s, the comic publisher was on the verge of bankruptcy and had to prevent the company from just ending entirely. That is when it was bought by Toy Biz and Marvel Entertainment Group when they merged together to create Marvel 
Enterprises, which was later named Marvel Entertainment as we know it today. However, there were several people at the time who were interested in buying the company and the king of pop was one of them. Michael Jackson had planned to buy the company and take over the rights to Spider-Man, who he ultimately wanted to play himself. According to Stan Lee, the iconic comic book writer and editor, Jackson wanted to produce a Spider-Man film but also wanted to play Spidey himself. For a number of different reasons, some being obvious, his plans fell through and the rights were handed over to Marvel instead. Alright guys, there's our list for today. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and tell me down in the comments which actor on this list you think would have made the best Spider-Man or the worst. For now, let's check out some comments from my last video. DC says, Hi Joss, you are an awesome host. I love all your videos and cute outfits and love the scrunchie. Happy Canada Day. Well, thank you so much and to all of my other Canadians on here, I hope you all had an awesome Canada Day. Thomas Sanders says, Hey Jocelyn, can I get a shout out? By the way, I am your biggest fan. Well, my mom might fight you for that title, but here is your shout out. Thank you, Thomas. David Meyer says, Harvey Weinstein is a horrible human being. Mankind at its worst. You hate to be a part of the human race when you hear people like Harvey Weinstein. I don't know what I like more, this comment itself or how passionate you are about that. Carmelo Segro says, I have done acting and sometimes you do find people who are fake friends. Oh, for sure you do. And not just in acting, in everyday life too. All right, we are at the end here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and click the and click the icon right over here to keep watching more beyond the screen videos. I'm your host, Joss, and I will see you next time. Oh, <laughs>